Good morning! It's Phil to the Brim and it is Friday, March 3rd and we're talking about being uncommon. And we've talked about a lot of different ways that as believers we are uncommon. Why? Because we have a treasure within us which is the power of the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to respond in the same way that the world does, that people who don't have the Holy Spirit, but we have the power within the, uh, within us, this treasure within us, so that we can respond to things around us in supernatural ways. We're not ordinary. We do the unexpected. We do what's rare. We do what's unconventional. We do it what's atypical. And I've talked about some of those things where we can have praise the Lord in the midst of difficulties and pain, where we can give in the midst of having lack. There are so many things we can love our enemy, even though they may try to harm us. We have the ability to love rather than reacting in kind, kind in the sense of doing what they're doing to us. We can love them because we have Christ's love. We can't do it in ourselves. Being uncommon, this whole concept, means that we know we have this treasure in us and we choose to respond to things differently through the power of the Holy Spirit. The theme scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10, but we have this treasure, that is the Holy Spirit, in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. In our mortal body. So Paul is speaking about our life here on earth that as a result of this treasure in us, we are supernatural people because we walk out our life here on earth with Christ's supernatural power. We are dead to self, to our fleshly ways, and we are alive to Christ. And that's why we are in common. Today I want to talk about having peace in the midst of our storms. See, that's being uncommon. When a storm is raging, one thing about scripture that's important to remember, it doesn't deny storms, it doesn't deny pain, it doesn't deny that we have enemies, it doesn't deny that we have persecution, it doesn't deny that we get hard pressed or perplexed, it doesn't deny those things. But rather, in facing those things, we have a supernatural power. And the focus today is having peace having peace in the midst of our storms. This is one very popular uh, passage in scripture about when Jesus calms the storm. And we're going to start there. And it's found in Matthew chapter 8. But the truth is this. It's important to see what leads up to that time when Jesus is interacting with the disciples and how they have responded to the storm. Because they we're choosing to respond in a certain way, and that's why Jesus confronts them. Matthew 8, 23 through 27, it says this, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith. Very important what Jesus' response to the disciples. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Then men, the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Now Jesus' response to the disciples' fear is this, you have little faith. You have little faith. What are the dynamics? Well, we know that the storm came up suddenly. It was unexpected. You know what? Many of the times when we need the peace of God is when we have unexpected problems, sickness, tragedies. These things come. They sideswipe us. 
and it's a storm in our life. So in this case, it was suddenly. And the disciples had the felt experience of this. The wave swept over the boat, it says. So they felt the waters coming into the boat. So they were feeling the experience. We, they had an emotional, physical, mental response to this storm. But the point of the story is, who are they choosing to have faith in? Are they choosing to have faith in the ability of the storm to destroy them? Or are they choosing to have faith in Jesus? That is really the question. Are they choosing Jesus and His power and His ability and what He has already shown them by them walking with Him up to this point? And that's why He says, you have little faith. Who do you have little faith in? In me. Rather than the storm, you are placing more faith in the ability of this storm to destroy you rather than putting your faith in me. You know, Scripture says this, that Jesus is our peace. Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself is our peace. So it's interesting in this storm, when we choose peace, we're choosing Jesus. Jesus is not separated from peace. Isaiah 9.6 says, He is the Prince of Peace. So when we're choosing to be overcome by the storm, and being tossed to and fro by the storm, and having faith in the ability of the storm, we are not choosing Jesus. And, and this is really what the scripture, this context is talking about. Because if you look at the trajectory of the story, what's happening before we get to this point where they're in the boat and the storm comes, if you start reading the beginning of the chapter, you find that the disciples are witnesses to Jesus doing miraculous things. He's healing. He's healing and healing and healing. If you read through the, the chapter, he's showing forth his authority over sickness and disease. He heals a man of leprosy. Then he goes and the centurion comes to him and wants this, his servant, tells Jesus, my servant is sick. He's going to die. And Jesus says, do I need to come to your home? He sa the centurion says, no, just by your word, I know he will be healed. And Jesus responds to the centurion in verse 10 of that very chapter, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. So he's highlighting the faith of the centurion that doesn't even need Jesus to come with him to his home. He believes so much in Jesus' ability. So you see this contrast in Scripture. You see the centurion's faith in Jesus, and then you see the disciples' faith in the storm, in the ability of the storm. Jesus, in this chapter, he also heals Peter's mother-in-law. So actually, it gets really, really personal of what Jesus' power and miraculous power and healing power and authority is doing in the lives of the disciples. That's why when we finally get to the story of the storm, it is, it is uh, very impacting what Jesus says to the disciples. Who are you choosing? Here you've seen all of these things. You've been part of all of these things. You've seen me have authority over all of these things. Even personally, Peter, I've healed your mother-in-law. And yet when the storm arises, you have little faith in me. Jesus is calling them out. Because there's a lot of times when we could be uh, spectators of what Jesus is doing. In other people's lives, we may love hearing the stories, the testimonies, and everything. But when it comes to our storm, we choose the power of the storm over the power of Jesus. We choose the power of the chaos over the one who is the Prince of Peace. And that is common to do, to choose the power of the physical storm around us, the emotional storm around us. But we're uncommon. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. We have the presence of Jesus in us. He is in our life. He's in our boat. He is with us. And we are to choose the uncommon thing. 
you know, Jesus says to us, what are you choosing? Are you choosing the authority of the storm or the authority of me in your life? Why are you so afraid? Yes, we feel the storm. Yes, it's a reality. Yes, it can come unexpectedly. Every person has it. But what makes you uncommon is what you choose to do. What your choice is in response. Do you choose Jesus over the storm? This is the challenge. This was the challenge to the disciples in that moment. And it's a challenge to us. But he is our peace. No one likes a storm. I don't like a storm. Jesus didn't like the storm. That's why he calmed it. But it, the most important thing comes down to, what are you choosing? What power? Where is your faith resting? Because your faith is resting either in the power of the storm or in the power of the Prince of Peace, the one who can calm the storm. Because truly, the first place that must be calm is within us. And that's where Jesus dwells, within us not the externals, within us. I want to challenge you to be uncommon in your faith, to choose Jesus in the midst of your storm. There are always storms that are going to come. They rage. That's part of life. We don't deny that they happen, and they're felt. They're felt. You can see or and feel the waves and the waters coming into your boat. But then there's a choice, and the choice is where will I put my faith? Is my faith in the power of the storm, or is my faith in the power of Jesus to calm it? And I challenge you, and I challenge myself, Lord, I choose you. I want to have that uncommon response to you through the supernatural power of God, that treasure that you have given to me, that dwells in me. God bless you. Pray about this word.